We're back with a bonus conversation you'll only see here on CBS News New York. So you have been the gun czar for a year. I wonder what keeps you up late at night? What do you worry about? I worry about getting the call that there's been a shooting, unfortunately, um, someplace throughout the city, like everyone else. You know, my concerns are with our New Yorkers. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, that's what keeps me up at night. I'm hopeful that, and I'm very appreciative when we don't have shootings overnight and things are quite peaceful in the city. So one of the shootings that actually upset the city recently was the, the shooting in Washington Heights, the bodega shooting, where an innocent bystander was on the phone on the street and got a bullet to the head. It was, you know, no, there's no way to know how, how it happened. How do you deal with something like that? Well, one of the things that we do, our hearts go out to, to the victim and his family to the community, you know, because of that senseless act. Um, we normally want to respond to that neighborhood with a trauma unit and to be able to assist the community in dealing with the grief and with the trauma that's associated uh, to that type of shooting. Um, oftentimes, we, we make contact with the family. We, we assist the family with however which way we can. Um, and really, you know, we allow for law enforcement to do what law enforcement has to do, which is, you know, now they have to investigate that vicious crime. But do you find that um, there's a lot of anger in the community because this was, you know, um, an unexplainable act of violence? Absolutely. Community is outraged whenever those type of situations happen, when innocent bystanders are struck in the middle. Um, no one, you know, you know, should have to, you know, die that way, right? So it's, how do you diffuse that? I mean, how do you go into a community and diffuse that? Because you can't really explain it away. You yeah. don't even know who the person was, whether Absolutely. it was a gangbanger, whether it was just somebody firing at somebody else and missed. Well, we try to do a lot of recovery. We do work within the community. And again, we try to go into the neighborhood and try to assist in any way we can with the community. Um, one of the other trainings that we are trained in is retaliation and how to prevent the retaliation. If it is allegedly associated with some sort of turf or beef or over groups, then we want to try to make sure that it, it ends with just that one shooting and it's not an ongoing situation. So is drill rap a big concern of yours now, the people who um, are sort of using guns as part of their music? I think with the actual drill rap as a, f a form of hip hop or rap in itself, it's nothing wrong. It's, it's, it's a genre of music that is just like no other. However, the things that are being said, uh, if it's being used as tools to communicate uh, violence against one another, you know, that is a problem. You know, but the, the fact that the, the actual music and this genre and the brand and the, art, the artistic, you know, means for which people are using it today. I know the young people today, they love the music and I, I don't want to uh, attack them and their, you know, their passion for set music, but if it is something to promote violence on each, on one another, I mean, we, of course, we don't stand for that. Are you worried about the fact that sometimes guns appear in their music videos? Absolutely. I mean, to me, it, it doesn't make quite sense to be using, if there are guns being used inside the rap videos, it is troublesome to see. Yeah, and for that to be something that is, you know, disseminated throughout a community, it's heartbreaking and it's traumatizing. Ghost guns a big problem? Absolutely. I mean, if, if any gun of any type is a big problem in my eyes, if it's illegal and it's being used illegally and it's being used against people um, for really little or no reason, it's, it's a big problem, just as ghost, ghost guns are. You know, I know that uh, shoplifting isn't exactly um, in your bailiwick, but it is, it is if they're using guns in order to do it. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you think, I mean, this is something that the city hasn't been able to really stop. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is? Um, honestly, I can't tell you why that is. I mean, I know that the city is doing everything that it possibly can. Um, and retail theft and shoplifting is something I understand that the law enforcement branch is working um, on over time. But, um, you know, I can't really explain any more than that. So another thing that's happening is that the city council seems to be bent on trying to defund the police department or at least reduce the funds. I wonder how you come down on that and y your concerns that it could weaken the police department, or maybe you think there is too much money being spent on the police department, I don't know. I, I mean, I think that when we look at what needs to happen in terms of in the neighborhoods where we are focusing on, 
Um, I think that we just need to continue to, you know, to support the efforts that are already working, those that are evidence-based, that are data-driven. Um, we just need to make sure that we invest, continue to invest in those things that are working. Is there a concern that there could be an increase in crime with the asylum seekers that are coming into New York City? The concern does exist. Um, right now, the data does not reflect the concern. Um, so when people wake up and they see people in their communities that they are not familiar with, it does draw some concern, rightfully so. Um, but I think that, again, our mayor and his administration is very much on top of it. How did you feel about the chokehold case where the uh, homeless person was choked to death, mm -hmm. who was acting out on the subways? How do you come down on that? I think that it's an unfortunate situation to witness again, to see someone literally choke to death on, um, you know, camera and on, on TV, the way that it is played across the nation. It's traumatizing to watch, you know, um, and unfortunately it happened and it should not have happened. Um, and I think that now we have to allow for the justice system to, to do its part. I have one more question. I wonder what if, if you have any advice that you'd like to give Mayor Adams <laughs> as he continues to try to reduce crime and make people feel safe in their communities. Because mm -hmm. right now I think you think you see the numbers going down, but there's not a perception that people feel that they're safer, especially in the subways. What advice do you give them? I would say just keep up the good work. Honestly, I think that the mayor is spot on. Um, he's not a stranger uh, to these issues. He's faced these issues head on many, many times in his past. And I think that he is being very, wide, you know, very thoughtful on the issues and he's taking everything into consideration. And I would say, you know, to just keep doing the good job that he, I, I, I think the data is reflecting that he's doing. A.T. Mitchell, the city's gun czar, head of Man Up, thank you very much for Likewise. joining me. Thank you, Marshall. And thank you for joining me as well.